I see a lot of Wood's witticisms in American Gothic. I think it was, you know, kind of a friendly poke at the stereotype of Midwesterners as, you know, very staid and Protestant and straight-faced. And I think he was playing with that a little bit. He always just integrated things that he was passionate about in his work, and he found that house in Eldon with the funny little gothic window and wanted to use that and created these characters that he thought would live in a place like that. Wood had a really good sense of humor. You know, American Gothic really famously is his dentist, Dr. McKeeby, and his sister, Nan. And then Nan, you know, famously didn't think that she looked old enough to be Dr. McKeeby's wife. So she insisted that she was the spinster daughter instead. Certainly he was really the father of regionalism in the art world. He really thought that the Midwestern scene, Midwestern landscapes, Midwestern people were as worthy of artistic attention as you know, European scenes and the East Coast, which had dominated art history certainly for centuries in America. Um, so he really wanted to emphasize you know, the people and the culture and the landscape of the Midwest that he came from. He thought those were as worthy of attention as anything else. He didn't have a formal art education the way we think of it today, so he really kind of developed his style from a lot of work. He you know, went to Europe and looked at artists that he admired and worked in their techniques. And then um, in 1928, he went to Munich and he saw uh, the Northern Renaissance artists, you know, Roger van der Weyden and Hans Memling, and really liked their kind of hard-edged, a little bit simplified style. And so 1928 was a real turning point for him where uh, his style becomes kind of the mature Grant Wood style that's best known today. Man, especially early in his career. He did a lot of decorations for houses in Cedar Rapids. He built his own house. Um, he was, just had a great sense of humor. He was living in, above where they kept the hearses in a mortuary. And so I think it was very natural for him to, you know, kind of think it was funny to gravitate towards creating a door from the coffin lid. Um, and, you know, he does it in a really whimsical way where he creates the beautiful dial and talks about, you know, taking a bath or having a party because he loved to entertain up here. Such a small space, but he would throw um, theatrical engagements. He would host plays and he'd have big parties. And his mother kind of hid out in her room during those times. He did a lot of metal work. He did necklaces. He did silver work in Chicago early in his career. Um, so yeah, he's a really varied artist, and so it's, you know, today of course we think of him mostly as a painter, but that's certainly not the whole story.